Want a delicious recipe for a pie at this Thanksgiving? How about a chocolate pecan pie? Does that sound good to you? Sounds good to me. Once your dough has been chilled in the refrigerator for at least an hour or overnight, you can roll it out. Unwrap your dough. I have a pre-made disc of dough. You want to see how to make it? Watch yesterday's video. <laughs> Take a little bit of flour, throw it on your surface, lightly, not too heavily, and then the top of your dough as well. Give it a little bit of floury love, but not too much. And then just start rolling. You want to start from the center, rolling out, and every roll or two, rotate it about an eighth of a turn to keep it nice and round. You can also lift it up, turn it over, dusting underneath as you go. You want to make sure that it never sticks because that's when it's going to tear. It needs to be about 14 inches in diameter, then you can put it into your nine inch pie plate. I like to fold it over and then just quickly and gently lift it up and place it into the plate, unfold it, and then fit it into the plate nicely. Sometimes it's not quite even, you want to even it out, press it into the sides of the plate, and then trim it to about an inch. Go all around the edges, and then just fold the edges under to double the crust. Once it's all sealed, then you just go around the edges and you can crimp it however you like. I'm not even gonna crimp the edges for this, I'm just gonna seal it, put it in the fridge while I make my filling, and we're good to go. While the pie crust is chilling, you can get your filling ready. The first thing you need to do is melt four ounces of semi-sweet chocolate. So you see how the serrated edges of the knife slice so nicely through the chocolate? It works so much better than a chef knife. It's amazing. It's like it was made for cutting chocolate. Then just take a heat-proof bowl, put your chocolate in the bowl, then you're gonna place the bowl over simmering water. Make sure that the bottom of the bowl does not touch the simmering water and then stir it until it's melted. You could totally do this in the microwave if you wanted to. It's just another way to melt chocolate. My parents still don't have a microwave. And how do I heat up my coffee when I'm at their house? On top of the stove, can you believe it? We're almost there, it's almost melted. You see how fast that was? Mere minutes. Maybe even faster than the microwave because in the microwave you have to stop it and start it and stop it and start it so that you don't burn it. And this way you're just standing here watching it. I'm not saying it's better, I'm just saying it's different. Different is better in my opinion. Different, weird, all of those are excellent. Excellent things to be called. Chocolate's melted, we can make the rest of our filling. In another bowl, whisk together four large eggs. This is basically a custard. I know normally custards have some kind of dairy in them, like a cream or a milk, but really all it takes to be a custard is to be set with eggs. Then whisk that up, whiskey, whiskey. Then add one and a half cups of light corn syrup. Do you ever notice that every single pecan pie recipe has corn syrup in it? Do you think you could make it without corn syrup? It's not like before they invented corn syrup, no one ever made a pie with pecans, right? Hmm, I wonder. Then add one half cup of regular sugar, half teaspoon of fine salt, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. The pure stuff, of course, only the best for you guys and then whisk that in. The recipe says to stir it, so I'm using a stirring motion with my whisk. I think that's good enough, don't you? And then slowly add your melted chocolate to your egg mixture. Make sure you get every single bit of your chocolate, because that's gonna add such great flavor, obviously. It was only four ounces. You don't wanna leave any in your bowl. The chocolate adds a little bit of bitterness in a really, really sweet dessert, which is why I love a chocolate pecan pie. I actually like it a lot better than a regular pecan pie because I find regular too sweet. Now it's ready for the pie crust, so I'm just gonna go get mine. All right, here it is. Here it is, folks. Give it one more stir just so it's evenly combined. The last thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna arrange a cup of pecans on the top of the pie. You need one cup of pecans. Then I'm just gonna bake this on a baking sheet, so I'm gonna put my pie, put it on a baking sheet for this last part. So you're gonna bake it on a baking sheet. And then just arrange your pecans on top in an even layer. You can do a beautiful concentric circle arrangement, whatever looks good to you. Don't worry, they will float. <laughs> Sometimes I think, oh my gosh, I can't put this on there, they're gonna sink, but they don't. It's a pretty thick custard. That looks good. Have your oven preheated to 350 degrees and then bake this for an hour, rotating halfway through. It should jiggle just slightly in the center when it's done. When you take the pie out of the oven, there should just be a very, very slight jiggle in the center and it'll be puffed, but then it'll fall a little bit as it cools. That's okay, just take it out, let it cool for about four hours and even up to overnight. 
The pie's been cooling for four hours. I've been patiently waiting. I just want to tell you one thing about this pie. Make it in the morning before you put your turkey in the oven. That way you don't have to worry about rushing around and making your turkey and all of a sudden your pie's not cool when you're ready to eat it. The crust gets all nice and golden brown because you were baking it in the bottom of the oven. Plus all that hot sugar cooks the crust really nicely. It's still slightly, slightly warm. So there's some melty chocolate. If you refrigerated it, that would not be the case but it would still be delicious. That looks so good. I think I'm gonna skip turkey and go straight for dessert. What about you? <laughs> I think you're gonna want to. Mmm, delicious.